today's message is withstanding the flames, withstanding the flames. And this is part of a series that we've been in. This is part two of this series called Form by Fire. And we start this morning with this question, how do you handle the unexpected? And what an unexpected event the past number of weeks have been. Who would have ever thought schools would be closed down? Who would have ever thought that, uh, uh, ladies, don't get mad at me when I say this, uh, the salon was not going to be available? And, and, and how can the church be shut down not to meet at, at, at Easter time? But it's happened. The unexpected has found its way to our hearts. And guess what? I've been under pressure. Have you been under pressure? Have you been trying to process how to navigate through this time? And the question also is this. What do you become when life doesn't go your way? What do you become when life doesn't go your way? Now, now uh, we got to go way back for some of us. For some, we're, we're there right now. But remember as a kid how you responded to your mom and dad when things didn't go your way. Do you remember? My brother was really good at it. When things didn't go his way, he just kind of chill out and be calm. But when things didn't go my way, when I really wanted them to go my way, my mouth would explode and I would storm, slam doors sometimes. That's a shame, but I did. And, and, and one of the things that I've learned in my journey, we hope we mature, right? But there's certain tendencies in our character that continue throughout our life that we have to battle with. My brother is still one that can chill real quick. Uh, my son Austin, he, he can chill real quick. He can get me going, but he can stay chill. And, and so everybody is different in how they handle or deal with life when it doesn't go your way. Uh, also, does your love for God lessen? When life is not what you expected. And now here's the thing. We wouldn't say, God, I don't love you as much. But maybe our actions would decline in how we express our love to God. And one of the greatest ways that we express our love to God is faith. Trusting Him. Wanting to hear from Him. Wanting to relate to His Holy Spirit that lives in us. And then we see this. Do you devalue God when your pain increases? Now, we know, uh, Tiffany, you guys have been through so much this year. The challenges that you've walked through with your precious sister, it is, it's, been, it's been unreal. You know, this event that we're walking through now uh, is less, it's, it's, it's probably nothing compared to what y'all been through. And y'all have had this situation that has arisen how do I treat God when bad things happen? How do I value His love when things happen that I never planned for? And here's the deal. In our lives, we never know what, what's coming. We don't. And I've told people this. One of the things that has been a challenge for me in this time, I didn't have this one in the filing cabinet at all. That, that the church could just be said, don't meet. And, and you better stay at your house. Never, never factored that. But you guys have weathered through to trust God through this. And the same is true in our struggle. When the fire arises, when the trial comes, may we not devalue God when our pain increases. See, trials are not meant to weaken our faith. Because if that was the case, we'd be all walking around with some weak faith because everybody in here has been through some trials. But trials are not meant to weaken our faith. Trials come to make our faith stronger. Isn't that a blessing? Let's look at Hebrews 11, verse 6, and let's look at the importance of faith. And without faith, what's that next word there? It is impossible, saying you can't do it, it can't be accomplished. Without faith, it is impossible to please him, please God. 
So, so faith is really important to guard because if we don't have it the way God wants us to have it, in fact, God loves us so much, he gives us the faith. But we have to connect to it. We have to walk in it. We have to exercise our faith. But without faith, it is impossible to please him for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Think about this for a minute. If my faith is weak, do I even want to draw near to God? No. Draw near to so many other things, but not God. Then also, if my belief that he really loves me and and is watching over me and has plans for me, if my faith is weak, I don't really believe he factors in to my existence. And then also, if I don't think that faith applied changes the atmosphere or changes my life, then I won't walk in it. Because what does this say? That he exists and that he, God, rewards those who seek him. How many of us want the rewards of God? And what does that really mean? His unspeakable blessings and encouragement. He ministering to our souls so that we have solace no matter what happens. His blessings, not to mention the eternal life that is ahead, but blessings on this earth that fill us with peace that no money or man can provide. Then also... This is a scripture found in Isaiah 26 too. And and I, I want you to envision what Isaiah was, what God was saying through Isaiah. He was saying there's a day coming that Jesus is going to return to the earth. Okay? And God is going to set up his kingdom here on this earth. We're not going to have to worry about uh, COVID-19. We're not going to have to worry if our leaders are lying to us or not. Not going to have to worry about that. Not even going to have to put up with news networks publicizing things to us anymore. It's going to be the kingdom of who? Kingdom of God. And it's coming, and it might be closer than we think. So Isaiah, led by the inspiration of God, these words of God came in a prophetic manner, telling us what that day was going to look like. And let's look at these three verses in Isaiah, Isaiah 26 too. Open the gates that the righteous nation that keeps faith, let's read that together, may enter. So he's saying the gates of the kingdom of God are going to open wide for the nations that honor the Lord by keeping what? Keeping faith. And when we say nations, we're not talking about just boundaries drawn by men, but we are a nation of God, the church. We are of the nation and the family of God. And this is the image. Open the gates that the righteous nation that keeps faith may enter in. You keep him, think about this, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. And let's read this together. Because he trusts in you. What is faith? Faith is trusting in the Lord. Where does uh, peace flow from? It flows from God when we walk in faith. So when the fire comes to take the faith out, don't allow it. Call on God's power to guard your belief, your trust, so that you can walk in peace. And then we see in verse 4, trust in the Lord when you feel like it. No. Trust in the Lord when uh, people don't lie to you. No. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord God is an everlasting rock. So right now, one of the things that we're walking through is that we are feeling unstable in our society. We don't know how how long jobs will stay intact. We don't know, in fact, we don't know, know this, how long the dollar will have any value as checks are printed over and over in our country. We don't know what the future holds, but we know this, and I know you've seen this on T-shirts and on bumper stickers. We know who holds our future, don't we? And we know this, that the Lord is an everlasting rock. 
guard faith and trust in him. See, when life ignites into fires that are set against us, what do we become? What do we become? And here's a few thoughts. Life doesn't go my way. I can get bitter. I can just say, everybody's sorry. Everybody lies to you. You can't trust anybody. And just get nasty and bitter. Also, if life doesn't go our way, do we become resentful? And walk around the rest of our lives with hate and resentment towards others. And maybe towards God because life didn't go the way, what? That we wanted it to go. Another thing that happens that breaks your heart because you are filled with the potential of God. You have the Spirit of God living in you. Man will lie to you and tell you that you don't, that you won't amount to anything, but you have the full presence of God in you, and you have his purposes that were designed uniquely for you. And how sad it is to walk around disheartened and just saying, God can't use me. Or being so disappointed that life isn't the way you want it, that you just get disheartened. Or even this ugly word, complacent. Just status quo. Just keep going, keep going. And I'll be honest with you, during this time, it's been a challenge for me. Because when I look and see what's going on in this world, and I see this as, as, now hear this closely, as a spiritual attack against the body of Christ. And so in that, what is the easiest thing to do? Give up and just quit. But God did not call us to be people that are unfaithful. God did not call us to be people that are faithful just because things are going our way. In fact, God loves faithfulness in the midst of things going the opposite way that we intend. That's when faithfulness rises up and shines brightly to the heart of God, regardless of how others view it. And then this is another thing that we can become when life doesn't go our way. We can unplug from God and just be ungodly. Just let life be managed by what I feel and what I want. And regardless of what God thinks, it doesn't matter to me. I'll just be what? Ungodly. And then this goes along with uh, hopelessness goes along with disheartened. No place for the hope of God to live in me. And this is, it looks like this. The hope of God is a belief that things will get, will get through this. Doesn't mean we'll get through it de- designed the way we want it. But we're going to get through it. And, and, and it's all going to be, in this powerful word, it's all going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It's in God's hands. And, and, and so hope is saying, it isn't what I see that drives my heart. It isn't what I see that makes me faithful to God. It's that my faith is not in my circumstances. My faith is in God. And then I, I wanted to make the last one this, and this is a a, a reality that we have to focus in on. When life doesn't go our way, when life is not what we've wanted, does it cause us to simply become a perishing soul? And what is a perishing soul? A perishing soul is a soul, a spirit created by God that lives in us that is unplugged from the purposes and plans from God guiding our own path, going our own way, and letting our soul perish and die within. God is about enhancing our soul and and strengthening our spirit. But if it doesn't go my way, if I unplug, if I walk in hopelessness and all these other things that were listed, it produces in me a soul that is perishing. Now, Y'all remember Stephen in the Bible, right? In the book of Acts. Mighty man of God. Serving God with all of his heart. Doing what God had asked him to do. And here we look at these verses of scripture that he is proclaiming to his city. 
right before they're getting ready to take stones and crush his body unto death. And, and you remember the image. Stephen walking in the will of God. They looked on the man that they were stoning and they saw the radiance of God upon his face. His face. And, and this is part of that message that he shared before he was martyred for Jesus Christ. And Stephen said in Acts chapter 7 verse 9, And the patriarchs, and that's speaking of Joseph's brothers, and the patriarchs, jealous of Joseph, sold him into Egypt, but let's read this. But God was with him. So wait, didn't he do something wrong to get sold uh, into slavery? Not according to God. And then we see something else. And rescued him out of all his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom before Pharaoh king of Egypt, who made him ruler, speaking of Joseph, who made him ruler over Egypt and over all of Pharaoh's household. Big contrast, right? We see this. Joseph set a mighty standard for all to follow to withstand the flames of life that rage against us. You know about the flames, right? Know about them? Let me, let me get a couple of things here. Let's talk about the flame for a minute. The trials of life come in a lot of different degrees, don't they? Just like fire. Let's see if I can get this to light. Just like fire. Not too intimidating, right? Until you get close to it. I remember one time we were at, uh, at a restaurant that had a flame, uh, an oil candle, okay, in a glass uh, jar or glass lamp. And my son was, you know, and it was a real flame. And it didn't look too intimidating. It was probably a little bit less than that. And Austin thought, well, let's see how close I can get. I think it was Austin. And he was a little guy, and he put, I think, your arm o- over the top. And next thing he knew, that, that flesh started to sizzle. And he, and he had, uh, he still has a scar today from that of getting what? Close to the flame. And that flame, that flame looked um, not very intimidating. But we know this, who wants the struggle and the trial? We don't, but we know this, some are easily taken care of, but they come back. Some are are not intimidating, but they're very irritating, right? And they keep coming back. But flames and and, and struggles in life come in a lot of different, a lot of different degrees. Now, I want you to listen closely to this. So I can do this. Hear that? Sometimes you know the flame's coming, right? Sometimes you can see it in the making. You can what? Uh Uh-oh, things are getting ready to be bad. I'm not going to hurt you, I promise. That's probably a little dangerous to do that, but, but, but we can hear it coming. We don't want it to come, but what? Here it is. And... Sometimes, let's see if I can do this without causing the fire marshal to have to come out. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a raging, hot, hot flame. And I, I've used this to, to cook with, and if it gets near tin foil, guess what happens? It'll melt it away. It'll melt it away. And it's real. It's a flame. It's an intense flame. And, and sometimes in life, It comes without warning, intense to the point where we think we're just going to die. 
And then sometimes, guess what happens? Some people do perish and die, like Stephen. He wanted to continue to be a man that brought the gospel to people. Yet this was a flame that was going to end his life. And then I, I want to ask the church this. Could we be in the season before the Lord returns? Closely, within a decade, could we? We could. And one of the things that is very evident is that the church is going to have multiple people go away. They call it the apostate church. There's going to be government restrictions placed on Christians for them to deny their faith and trust in Jesus. And then those that stand up for Jesus that are honest to their faith in God will be in prison for their trust. Right now in Canada, if you teach on certain scriptures in the Bible, they will lock you up in jail in Canada. If you speak of anything that they consider as hate speech, uh, if you speak things clearly pronounced God's opinion in the Bible, they'll lock you up. How about this? Pastors over the past few weeks have been fined and some have been in prison because all they wanted to do was to gather the saints together. Rick, now, please hear me on this. Whoever's opinion, whether it was wise or not to gather, the point is this, is that all they wanted to do was to allow the gathering to continue. And, and so right now we look at that and we say this is a, 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 a season of adjustment. And, and, and I get that. That's why we canceled uh, service for the amount of time that we did. We canceled it to, as a guard. And, and, but over time we realized we need the ability to continue to gather. And, and thank God we live in a state where we can. But that day may change. Will we continue to gather and risk the consequences when that fire gets turned up? And here's the thing. That fire is already turned up in our, in our nation and in our world. What is it doing to us? What was once seen as a place of safety and encouragement now is imprinted with the potential of what? Endangering your life. But I don't know about you guys, but I went to uh, Target and uh, different stores and they're packed out. They're packed out. They're packed out. What are we going to do when life goes in a direction that we don't want? What will that make us? Joseph teaches us how to keep the dreams of God alive within our heart when life turns against us. You remember this from our, our last message in this series, the coat of many colors. Remember Joseph as a, as a young man, a, I'm not sure exactly what his age was, but his father, because he was a baby at that time, Gave him this coat of many colors and his brothers got what? Jealous and to a point where they were willing to kill him. But we talked about this, this coat of many colors symbolic to us is this. The call and covering of God doesn't live on the external presence of us, but it lives within. It's like a coat of many colors. Let me put it in this sense. The coat of many colors uh, for Joseph was, he, I'm special to daddy, you know. Daddy blessed me. And, and, and Joseph, as we talked about his dreams in this last study, he, God gave him vision for what he would, would be doing. Yet that coat of many colors ended up being bloody and torn and presented to his daddy as, quote, evidence that he had been eaten by wild animals. But that coat of many colors was living on within the heart of Joseph. And we see it through his actions. Same way with us, regardless of what life has brought our way. Regardless of the circumstances we find ourselves in, God's 
covering and God's call is still alive within our hearts if we keep what? Faith. Don't let anybody steal your faith. Somebody can tell you you can't get your hair done. Don't let them steal your faith. Somebody say, I don't know which one's harder, right? You know, don't let people steal your faith. And I want us to look, and we're going to try to cruise through this kind of quick. How Joseph withstood the flames. Withstanding the flames. Here's what he taught us. First, honor God regardless of what life brings. Can you write down for me any events that could happen in our lives that is worthy for us to dishonor God? And I want you just to think on that for a minute. Life can be horrible. Life can be pain unimaginable. However, Nothing that comes against us in this life is worthy for us to dishonor God. Nothing. And every harmful action perpetrated upon us has been seen by the eyes of God. And God's vengeance is ready to unload on those who have harmed you. Those that are lying to us in leadership. Those who present false stories. God is seeing those who are coming against the church. God's watching. And God will hold them accountable. (laughs) We don't have to worry about that. But we must keep this in mind. Learning from Joseph. Honor God regardless of what life brings. Joseph, his life went from pit to pit. Can you imagine one day being out trying to help your brothers and they all gather you and tie you up and throw you in a pit and talk about should we kill him should we kill him and then one of the brothers out of the mercy and grace of God then this sounds kind of crazy but he says no 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 let's not kill him we'll sell him to these uh, traders you know that are this this band that is heading to Egypt we'll sell him we'll sell him let's just sell him let's not kill him from pit to pit and then in the household of Potiphar Potiphar's wife trying all she could to seduce him he stood faithful to God and faithful to Potiphar and he was still accused and thrown into the pit of Pharaoh's dungeon from pit to pit what did Joseph do wrong nothing But he did this, he honored God regardless of what life brought to him. You imagine how many people that their brothers plot their murder and and sell them into slavery. Can you imagine what that does to the heart? But Joseph says, no, God saw all of that. And God loves me regardless of the pit I find myself in. So he continued to honor God regardless of what life brought him. Can we say that in our lives right now? Regardless of how this country will change, will we still honor God? Will we? Will we? Because this country is changing. This world is changing. And God's word has made it known to us. Evil will enhance And will increase in the latter days. But his church is eternal. And there's going to be a glorious place in heaven for those that stand truthful to honor God even unto death. Blessed, blessed, blessed. But here's the thing. Can we handle from pit to pit in our lives? What is the pit done to us? Withstanding the flame. Another element of of the wisdom of Joseph that God allowed us to witness is how did he withstand the flame? He honored others no matter how difficult. Now, this is vital. Because, man, I can unleash an attitude when I justify it. Oh, I can. You are. And I can hold it. That, you know what the Bible talks about, don't keep records of wrong? Well, why did he give me so, so much memory space in my mind? 
Look at the situation. Joseph honored others no matter how difficult. Who did he honor? Potiphar. Potiphar bought him. And here he found himself in slavery. And you know what he did? If God had told him to run and leave, guess what? He would have run and left and everything uh, would have been under God's protection if that's what God told him. But God told him, stay faithful. Honor Potiphar. And he did. How about this? When he went to jail for a false accusation of, quote, uh, trying to sexually abuse Potiphar's wife, which was a total lie. Here he is in jail, and he is entrusted with the management of the jail and, and, and turns, makes it run with great efficiency. Same way in Potiphar's household. Potiphar gave him control of everything over his house. And he said, Potiphar, has put me in charge over everything in this house but you. But Potiphar didn't have to worry about a thing because the excellence of Joseph continued to honor those that even caused him harm. And same thing in our lives. When someone hurts us, never forget this. Honesty is greatly needed. Bitterness and hatred is not. And when people are stupid, foolish, cruel, and mean, we, you say, Pastor, this is getting a little crazy. How do we honor someone that has been cruel and evil to us? We don't set ourselves up for perpetual Uh, uh, pain and abuse. We don't. It's not of God. But there are events that happen in our life that live on in our minds. And God wants us to recognize honor in this way. That person is made in your image and their evil is not going to live in me. I will not turn to evil to pay them back. Your vengeance is what I trust in. What have you asked me to give them? Love. Doesn't mean I have to sit there and say, punch me again. I don't have to do that. Or stay in a situation that is, that is terrible. No, no. But don't let their evil live in you. See, Joseph wasn't changed by Potiphar. He wasn't changed by the, the jailer. And he was not changed by Pharaoh. And then this is where it gets really close to home. Joseph still honored his brothers. Can you imagine what would happen to the brothers that plotted his murder, that sold him into slavery? Here he is, the most powerful man in the world under Pharaoh. And here they come in need. And he had the power to just simply say, kill him. And they would have been what? Say it. They would have been killed. They have been done away with. Joseph's countenance wasn't made up. How did he have love for his brothers and honor for them in this horrible situation? You ever had the upper hand on somebody? It happens. You got the upper hand. And the upper hand wants to come down hard, right? But something just hits you. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. no, no, no. Oh. And you think back, I could have. But I didn't. And, and there's a peace that comes because of who? Because of God. He withstood honor. He continued to give honor to his brother's regardless of the circumstances around him. And then this is where it also hits very close to home. How he handled the flame, he honored others no matter how difficult. Was it difficult to show love to his brothers and to bless them the way he did? I would think it would be, Chance. I really do. I think it was very difficult. But how about this? He had to continue to show honor to God in all the hell that he walked through. 
same is true in our lives. Hell is coming, okay? Struggles and flames are coming. How's it going to change us? God plans it to change us for the better. (laughs) And we're going to stand and we're going to know it ain't me, it's your power in me. It's your attitude in me. Because if it was the old me, mm -mm. I know none of you ladies know how to fight back now, right? (laughs) I remember in middle school, man, I said, you know, you see two guys fight in middle school. It's like, ah, that's hot. But you see two girls, oh, man. I mean, it was, I was like, it was was very (laughs) eye-opening. Oh, But when we're going through the flames, it is so easy in us to blame God for what's going on because isn't he in control? And Joseph had to feel that, God, how did you let this happen to me? But he continued to honor God regardless of what life or the flames brought to him. And then this, how did Joseph withstand the flames? We withstand the flames by apply your gifts to their full potential. Apply your gifts to their full potential. Meaning this, God has entrusted to you beautiful gifts and talents that are uniquely designed and crafted by him to bless you and to bless others. It's the calling of God. It's the placement of God. It's being in God's will in His rightful, rightful position that He has for us. And, and, and sometimes when life doesn't go our way, we'll just cast that all aside and say, doesn't matter. And I want to say, regardless of what people have told us about our gifts, if they've been negative, don't listen. God has made you fearfully and wonderfully. And his gifts must live on through the flame. And that's what Joseph did. He goes into Potiphar's household and he sets that household established and strong and in proper order. Why? Because he had the gift of administration. He had the gift of administration. And he used it. Wisdom. Then he goes in the jail. He could have just been totally mad. I did my best for Potiphar, and Potiphar throws me in jail based on a lie. Joseph, make the jail better. The people were blessed in the jail because of Joseph. A man of wisdom, a man that brought in the presence of God with him. You know people like that? You're going through it, and someone comes around, and it's like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We need the temple of God to show up in life around us because we are the temple of God filled with the Holy Spirit. We need His Spirit presented more so than our fallen flesh. And He is so willing to do that. And that's what Joseph did. He applied his gifts to, the full, to their full potential. In, for Potiphar was blessed. His household was blessed. The jail was transformed and blessed. And then we know this. Egypt was going to have a devastating famine. And God used Joseph's ability to interpret dreams to prepare Egypt to weather through seven years of drought and famine. And because he used his gifts to honor God, Egypt was delivered. You know the story. I don't have to repeat it. Pharaoh, Pharaoh had a dream and looked for someone to interpret it. And Joseph was the one that did. Seven years of excess. Seven years of degress. Those seven years, store up, store up, store up. Prepare, because those seven negative years are coming. 
And because of Joseph applying his gifts regardless of what life handed him, not only was his homeland saved, because people came and bought grain from Egypt during those seven years, but it wasn't just his homeland, but also the whole surrounding world at that time was saved because of Joseph. Applying his gifts. And then how about this? How blessed was God by the life of Joseph? You know, look, look at Joseph's life, life in the Old Testament. Look for, look for something to get angry about. I don't see it. I mean, I get angry at what, what happened to him, meaning that why would you do that to Joseph? And the only thing maybe Joseph, at a young age, maybe walked a little bit in, in, in maybe had some pride issues. We don't, we don't know that fully. But people didn't want to hear the celebration of what God was doing in his heart. And that, that's how it works sometimes. But Joseph, his life brings such great honor to God because he used his gifts. And then also, withstanding the flames... How did Joseph withstand the flames? What do we learn from his life? Have faith that is unconditional. God, I love you if you do this for me. You ever been in a relationship like that? You didn't do that for me, so I ain't going to love you. Or I'll love you if you do this. That That isn't how faith operates. And Joseph knew that. He had faith that was unconditional. His faith was in what? Say, say, say that for me. His faith was in what? God. Not circumstances, not events, not his troubles, not his pains. His faith was in God. And God doesn't change. Joseph's faith remained in God and did not change. Unconditional. How Joseph withstood the flames in conclusion today, he honored God Regardless of what life brings. That's what we learn. Honor others no matter how difficult. And it's going to get difficult. We know it. Apply your gifts to their full potential. If you don't know what your gifts are, pray that God will reveal. But I tell you this, your number one gift is being a dwelling for God's Holy Spirit. And to bring His presence into the atmosphere that He's placed you in. And, and it's God. It ain't, it ain't us. And when, when it is us, tied up in all this religion stuff, it ain't very pretty, right? But when it's the Holy Spirit, ooh, ooh, it's powerful. And then have faith that is unconditional. And I'm going to ask if we could just stand for a moment.